Okay, this is a video to uh, look at how you can make a start with multi-channel in uh, Reaper. Um, it's designed principally for the students on Sound in Space at DeMontfort University, uh, but might conceivably be useful for others. Um, but it does mean that uh, I'll be referring to particular studios and particular studio setups which might not be relevant for others or indeed for students who uh, devise their own multi-channel configuration at home and want to um, to use Reaper with that. Uh, but hopefully um, it, the, the, what I talk about can be is transferable. Um, <clears throat> The other thing is uh, that I'm using my own computer for this rather than the studio computers because uh, the Avid driver that they use makes it awkward to uh, record the tutorial at the same time as uh, running the 5.1 um, system. Um, and obviously I'm more familiar with my own machine as well, which helps. Uh, but of course that does mean that you won't be able to hear the uh, all of the channels because uh, I don't have a 5.1 setup on this machine. Um, so you'll have to imagine those, or I will describe what should be happening, um, and hopefully when you try it on a 5.1 system, uh, that will work for you. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of follow a, a similar model to, to uh, what I will do when I come to do a logic uh, multi-channel um, startup tutorial. Um, we'll look at uh, importing a couple of uh, sound files, well three actually, mono, stereo and 5.1 um, and see how you can route those and again hopefully once you you figure out how uh, all of that works then that should be transferable to other numbers of files that you want to somehow deploy um, within Reaper to, to come out of those 5.1 channels. So <coughs> I've opened uh, Reaper um, and first thing obviously I need to do is to make a track I don't think there's anything unusual about the setup that I need to talk about, um, so I can just get going. Uh, so we'll bring in a mono file to start off with. Let's find one. Mono pad. Okay, so I've made, uh, I recorded a, a mono pad in um, from Logic. It's very dull, uh, but it should serve to, uh, for example purposes at least now. So it sounds like that, like I say, very dull, but that's all right. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, by default, the tracks in Reaper are stereo output, so regardless of whether it's a stereo or a mono file, it will output to stereo. Um, uh, but obviously we want to output to 5.1, so uh, one of the, well, the the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, declare this track to be a 5.1 track, or at least to have um, to accommodate more than the two channels that stereo is. So if I go to root um, <clears throat> in here, um, we can ignore most of this, but up at the top you've got uh, the number of channels in the track uh, and if you click on it, this is the wonderful thing about Reaper is that it will accommodate 64 channels per track. That's pretty amazing. Um, so we'll choose six. Um, I'm working with 5.1 and of course 5.1 includes six channels, five for the satellite speakers and then one for the sub. Uh, so we'll choose six um, and nothing changes beyond that except for the, the, the Reaper now knows that uh, it will need to deal with six channels on that uh, track. One other thing to point out is that we are still sending this data or data from the track to the master send, um, which you will see down down here as a um, as a channel or as a, um, as a as an independent kind of uh, master track. Um, so that should be all we need to do for uh, that. So I'll close that up. What's next? Um, oh yes. So. Uh, at some point we will need to um, manage the master fader so that that also deals with six outputs and also declare which uh, outputs on your audio interface those are to go to. Um, now down here I could click on routing 
in order to uh, to uh, access the routing for the master channel. Um, if your mixer display is not at the bottom of the screen, so let's pretend that it wasn't there, um, you can also, this might be a handy trick if you don't already know it, you can also view the master track within your um, uh, track listing. So if I click on show master track, uh, then it appears at the top. Um, so here again I can click on the route and uh, this is a simpler interface than the one you saw per channel but here again it's got track channels which I can change to six. Now as I say at some point I'm going to want to add hardware outputs because by default uh, Reaper only has um, one uh, which is uh, output one and output two. Um, I'm going to add those later on because um, uh, there's a there's a an issue with the channel configuration for 5.1 uh, and depending on uh, what configuration you've chosen this might be different. So I'll close that up for now. Um, so on the track you will have somewhere I think yes you've got a panning control but this one is just a, a standard left right uh, pan and we are looking for a multi-channel panner um, and there isn't one that's sort of embedded within the track in Reaper uh, but there is a very flexible and powerful tool uh, in the effects um, capabilities of Reaper that we can use for that. So we'll open that up um, and I've got uh, various things in here um, but I can filter those, well actually I can see it there, but I can filter the results uh, for re-surround, uh, re being R-E-A for Reaper surround and there it is at the top. So I'll choose that and OK. And here it is. Now um, because I've declared this to be a, a six channel track uh, it's automatically assumed that I'm dealing with 5.1 um, and so it has given me a 5.1 setup. Um, now this is uh, supposedly standard but in fact uh, your 5.1 setup probably won't and certainly shouldn't really look like this. Um, it should be your, your front three speakers should be probably closer than this um, and your rears should be more at, I think it's um, uh, 90 to 100, 110 degrees, I think, uh, from the, from as it were, the vertical. Um, but we'll go with what Reaper's given us for now. That will serve our purposes. Um, now, like I say, Reaper can deal with a number of channels. So um, if I were to click up here, um, there's a series of uh, standard setups. Um, that you can choose, um, which uh, you know, which which might be handy for you to, to choose, um, as opposed to 5.1. You could also um, go with a user setup. So if you click at the top there, you can specify the number of uh, speakers that you want, and you can move them. So I'm not going to do that now. At the moment, these are fixed. But as I say, if I choose the user setup, the the speakers become uh, movable. We can also specify the number of input channels. Now again this is defaulted to five input channels but in fact I only want one because we've got a mono input. So I'm going to choose one for that and the rest of them uh, neatly disappear. Uh, so this is a... Um, it doesn't do everything this setup but it's it's a pretty powerful uh, multi-channel panner. Um, and we'll probably look more at these uh, these various options as we go on. But just to, to kind of talk about the anatomy a little bit, um, we can cl click on this kind of puck, uh, which has channel one, and we can move it around. Um, I shall put it in the centre for now, just because. Um, and you'll notice that in addition to the speakers, which, by the way, are not numbered, which is not hugely helpful, although down at the bottom here you can you can see which one, or you can surmise which speaker refers to is referred to by which 
uh, channels. So uh, front left is this one, and then front right is front here, and, and so on. Um, notice, by the way, the order of these. Um, this is the kind of standard channel setup for, um, I think, it's an ITU standard. I think it's ITU 771 or something standard for uh, 5.1, um, which is to have uh, your first two channels, left and right, then you have center, then you have uh, the low frequency effects channel, then back left and back right. Uh, as for the reason for this, it's largely, I suppose, to do with um, increasing uh, numbers of um, channels, both historically and in terms of the number of available channels in a system, uh, you know, which, which accommodates greater and greater flexibility. So first of all, you'd be concerned with left and right to give you a stereo image. You add the center to, to give you um, a more solid central image. Then you might add the LFE and then you might add surrounds. And if we, we were then to go on to 7.1, we could then add uh, additional surround channels, um, uh, which would kind of populate this lower uh, portion as we build up the number of available speakers. Um, so, so that's um, why that is, and you can see that for each of those, you can sp you can change the gain on the speaker uh, output, um, and you can do that for independent channels. You can also mute independent channels and solo them um, if you have a particular need to do that, which might be helpful if you just want to to you know to to see what the ch you know, the center channel on its own is doing, for example. Um, down at the bottom here, you have a, a, a means of changing that. So I could then change the influence. I can specify the influence here. Um, what that means, you will notice going back to this uh, display, that uh, you've got these um, curved lines, uh, which are um, which are actually referring to the speaker influence or the influence of each uh, speaker, which means that basically if I move the puck to, for example, this speaker here, then the assumption is that uh, the source is going to be loudest over that left-hand channel when the puck is closest to it. Um, and this circle here, because uh, its centre is on that speaker, is referring to the influence of that speaker, which means that as I move the puck further away from it, uh, we're getting less and less of the signal from that from this um, source being picked up, as it were, by that speaker, until we get to the edge of that circle, beyond which uh, it won't pick up that puck at all, as in it won't pick up the source at all from this speaker. It will, of course, from this speaker, because its influence is here, um, and from uh, which other ones? The, s the uh, central speaker, because its influence is here, and from the right-hand speaker, because its influence is there, and so on. Um, so you can change the um, the influence per per speaker. Unfortunately, you can't do them all at the same time. But you can see that as I move it, that gets closer to um, the speaker. I don't think if I double click it. Yeah, it's slightly disappointing. Um, if you double click it, you might hope that it might pop back to uh, a default. I don't think there's any key command that allows you to do that. So I think you have to kind of you have to guess if you happen to move that. So probably the advice there would be not to move it unless you need to. Um, but I did, so I'm having to guess. Uh, my trackpad is not very sensitive. That will do. Uh, so we'll go back to gain, not that it really makes any difference. Um, and then for the input faders, you uh, you, you also have a gain um, for, for each source. So this has a, has a loudness. Um, and it also has mono and solo and so on. Um, and if we were to go to gain, uh, I've got one um, option for the LFE. So um, you can specify the proportion of this uh, input channel or this source that will actually be sent to the low frequency effects channel. Because of course the low frequency effects channel isn't represented on this display because it has um, as it were, no physical kind of position, uh, certainly not in terms of the spatialization. It is an effects channel which is um, uh, kind of omnispatial, as it were, um, and it isn't 
So basically you have to specify using this uh, game control how much of the signal you actually want to send to that speaker. So there is quite a bit of flexibility in terms of how you manage that. Um, and as we might have a look in a minute, you can automate uh, much of this stuff. Uh, so no, you can't automate the number of speakers. Why would you want to? Uh, but you can automate the um, the movement of your um, source puck, um, and you can, I think, probably automate the input level and the level being sent to the LFE from that source, and so on. Um, we can do that uh, in a minute, assuming that I remember to. Um, other things that you could have a look at, these are largely display oriented, so you can change the size of the space, um, so the x-axis, the y-axis, and one thing I haven't mentioned is that um, this resurround thing operates in 3D, which is rather magnificent, and you can change the z height, uh, as in the height of that, both the source and the um, channel positions using that so I can't you know I'm, I'm apparently zooming but you can't actually see anything um, and you can zoom the whole space as well if that is helpful to you so for example if you wanted uh, a sound to migrate to considerably outside the available um, speaker space then you can do that which can be quite effective actually um, so that's that center trim I don't actually know what that's referring to um, so I'm not going to play with it right now. So that's uh, resurround, and I think I'm going to pause the video at this point um, in the interests of safety, in case my computer decides to bulk and lose the lot of what I've just said. So I will come back again in a minute.